So that's one book out. And a hundred to go. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Michelle, I'm one of the two mythical unicorns here on this channel and today we're in my slightly messy apartment because one of my resolutions that I mentioned in our ringing in the new year tag was that I wanted to do a clear out and I am going to start with my bookshelves which seems extreme possibly to a book collector but that is the hardest task but also it's the task that I enjoy the most weirdly because I like making sure that I have books on my shelves that I'm excited about that I want to read or that I want to read again and so I get excited after going through my shelves and like clearing out the stuff that I might not be so interested in anymore so that is what we're doing today and um, what we're dealing with is this so <laughs> these are my shelves they were in the apartment that I moved into I had no choice they're fine this top one is the biggest problem because I have to stand on my couch to reach it which is terrifying but we'll get through it so I'll give you a little tour of what it looks like at the moment. So this top shelf, we have my classics and my poetry. Then comes the miscellaneous, sort of general fiction one. And I have a feeling I might be clearing out quite a bit out of this one today. Then we have young adult, I guess. <laughs> Which is a lot smaller than you'd expect. And then non-fiction. I have a feeling this is the shelf that's going to be like least, I don't know, cleared out out of all of these because I don't buy a lot of non-fiction. So the stuff that I do have is probably mostly stuff that I want to read. Then we have fantasy and like two sci-fi books because <laughs> let's be honest, I don't read a lot of sci-fi. <laughs> then we have my favorite section. Which I think, I'm not sure this is going to be a section as we move forward. I'm not certain. We'll see how I feel about it. Then I decided to create a section called currently reading and planning to read next, which I'm terrible at. So this section might just become currently reading because I tend to be reading a lot of books at once. And I don't want them all on my nightstand because it looks really messy because I have a really, really small apartment. And then these are the books that uh, for some reason are not uh, in their places on the shelf. So they're just in a little pile. So that's what we're dealing with. And then, to be honest, I do have one little shelf more, which is this one. But these are books that I got from my grandparents last year, which are books from my great grandfather mostly. So those are not going anywhere. <laughs> They're staying right where they are. So one of the things that I do want to do, I do want to do, one of the things that I would like to do is to create an Asian fiction part, which would be nice. Um, I'm not sure that I have a lot of Asian fiction actually, but we'll see. I might have about seven or eight books and that's a good start. I have a feeling a friend of mine is sending me a new Murakami book. He sent me like two or three at this point. So I have a feeling that might continue on. Right. <laughs> I don't know how to get started with this. Well, there is one book that I already know that I'm giving to Anna because <laughs> I checked with her yesterday. So I was like, I have realized that I'm never going to get through this book. And I know she loved it and she doesn't actually have the physical copy of it. So I was like, I might as well just hand it over because <laughs> she'll enjoy much more having it in her shelf than me being annoyed that I haven't read it. Or I've tried to read it several times and I can't get through it because one of the main character really bugs me. 
And that happens to be Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera. So at least I know this is not gonna stay here. Oh gosh. Oh, I'm sad about that. I love Adam Silvera so much, but this book just wasn't for me. And that's fine. So that's going to Anna. So that's one book out. And a hundred to go. <laughs> so now I'm standing on my sofa. So if this is really shaky, I'm very sorry, but this is terrifying. And if you can hear construction in the background, I'm sorry, they just started hacking from out of nowhere. I can't do anything about that. So this is my classics shelf or part of my shelf. And you know, I've read most of these already and liked them. So I don't really, I have no problem with any of these books. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, when it comes to these big ones, I mostly find them pretty like i've read most of oscar wilde's work i have read i've read the bronte sisters but in other editions of like normal small books because these big ones are not very comfortable to read but they look pretty <laughs> then we have my poetry section which is very small and uh, only consists of poetry that i like and that i want so we're leaving this be too. Now, however, we're getting to, I guess, general fiction. <laughs> I don't really know what to call this. And I already know one that is going away. And that's this one. JK Rowling's Casual Vacancy. I did read this when it came out and thought it was fine. I'm one of these people I didn't want to get rid of. Like I was, I was like, I can't, I can't only have Harry Potter from JK Rowling and then I was like you know what JK Rowling doesn't care and I'm not too concerned about what she thinks of things anymore after her Twitter debacle so you're going away because I don't care for you much and um, I don't want to read you again so the casual vacancy is going to go. I loved Americana. That's not going anywhere. I'm taking Haruki Murakami because that is going to go into the Asian section. Call Me By Your Name, I love. Bureau Rights, I love. Cloud Atlas, I think I might need to read again. I haven't read that in ages. The Humans by Mac Matt Haig was really good. I just realized that should probably be in the um, fantasy and sci-fi section. Uh, Nocturnes by Katsu Ishiguru. I really love, I love that. It's a small like short stories collection with a lot of music influence and I really, I loved these. David Foster Wallace, Girl with Curious Hair. I loved The Truth About the Harry Cupid Affair by Joel Dicker. Now here's the thing with this. I read this a very long time ago at this point, I believe. I don't know. I'm not much for like crime anymore. And my mother does have this in Swedish. So if I want to read it again, I can just borrow hers. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. No Further Questions by Gillian McAllister. This is also a crime novel. <laughs> But I got this from one of my best friends and I really liked it actually. So that's not going anywhere. The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell. I haven't read this book. <laughs> I tried a couple of years ago and couldn't get into it, but I'm still interested at the end of the day. So it's staying. Haruki Murakami. This is Kafka on the Shore. So that's absolutely staying. Uh, another book that I was sent by one of my best friends. Yay, life. Now, this is A Little Life. It's the Swedish edition. And here's the thing. I bought this when it was really hyped up. And I've come to realize I really actually don't have in any interest to read this very sad and tragic book. Because I've read uh, what it's about 
more and uh yeah no i really I, i'm so i don't need this sadness in my life so it's going sophie's world is sort of a norwegian classic and so this is not going anywhere i really like this i haven't read it in quite a while but i'm it's gonna stay here all the light we cannot see by anthony door is a really really good book uh, about the second world war and i as i've said in previous videos i'm not a massive fan of war novels however this was really really good so it's staying here i am by jonathan safran fower i've not actually read this book yet but i love jonathan safran fower so it's staying here because i still have interest in it because i do want to read this oh gosh Buried Giant by Katsu Isroguro is not going anywhere because I really like this book, even though I haven't read it in a good while. Now, here we come to Sally Rooney. I read both of her books over the summer. I guess that's when she got pretty uh, popular after Normal People became a TV show. I haven't watched the show yet because the book... Uh, frustrated me to no end but it was really really addictive and I actually quite liked it at the same time like it was well written but the characters did my head in in both books both conversations with friends as well as normal people but at the same time yeah they were really well written so I did like them but they also frustrated me to no end but they're staying, both of these books. The Noise of Time by Julian Barnes. And this was another one of my favorite books from 2019, if I remember correctly. And uh, yeah, it's really, really good. So that's staying. All My Friends Are Superheroes by Andrew Kaufman is an incredible small little book, which is very weird and I haven't read it in a good while, but it's not going anywhere because I, I love that book. That's general fiction. That wasn't too bad. Three books that are going. It's so scary to be standing on this sofa. Hi! <laughs> here comes the YA section. And here's the deal with this. <laughs> the books that I have in this section are already very like cleared out. These are the favorites, I guess. These are the ones that for one reason or another, I love. However, these two books I bought this year and bought and read early this year. And yes, they were both fine, but I wasn't necessarily like super excited about them. So we'll see. Maybe Anna wants to read Gravity of Us possibly. So I'll check with her. So I don't know about these two. They might have to stay for now because they are still pretty new books and I don't just want to clear them out right now. So they're gonna stay there for now. Another thing that I realized is that I have The Crane Wife over there by Patrick Ness, but I'm fairly certain that it's not a YA. <laughs> so I don't really know what it's doing there. <laughs> so I'm gonna move that. It's not going anywhere, but uh, I just I don't want it in my, <laughs> in my YA section because it's not YA. <laughs> and then we have my nonfiction. And I'm gonna have to get down from the sofa for this, so. These are my non-fiction books, and I'm gonna be honest with you, none of them are going anywhere. My um, copy of the Michelle Obama uh, biography is currently at my mother's because she wanted to read it, so it's not there. But otherwise, yeah, uh, none of these books are going anywhere. <laughs> Good clear out, okay. <laughs> now let's check out the fantasy and a little bit of science fiction. Not very much science fiction. But anyways, <laughs> my stack of Brandon Sanderson books are not going anywhere. The first volume of Sandman by Neil Gaiman is not going on anywhere. And then I also have The Steel Prince by Victoria Schwab. It's not going anywhere. Patrick Ness's Burn is staying. The Monsters We Deserve by Marcus Sedrig. I'm not necessarily certain it should be on this shelf, but it has ghosts and things, so 
It doesn't really fit anywhere else. <laughs> then all of my VE Schwab, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> all of my Neil Gaiman, it's not going anywhere. The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss is staying. What's funny about that series is that I listened to the second one on audiobook and I haven't prioritized buying the second one. So I'll see when the third one comes out, maybe I'll buy the second one too. But as you can see, I have very little shelf space. So I have no need to buy that right now. Now let's see here. Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikatsu Kawaguchi. And uh, that is a Japanese author. So it's going into the Asian section. This is How You Lose a Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. Is an incredible book and it's not going anywhere. Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Safon is not going anywhere. And that's its sequel. I have those in Swedish. But uh, the direct translation for the second one is Angel's Game. I'm not sure if that's actually <laughs> correct. Good Omens is absolutely not going anywhere. <laughs> and neither are The Humans by Matt Haig. And this is my Harry Potter collection <laughs> and The Crane Wife. And then here comes this part and this is my favorite section so obviously these books are not going anywhere however this is a south korean author and also my favorite book of 2020 and it's incredible and this is a japanese author another one of my favorites from 2020 so they are going into the asian section that i'm currently creating we'll see how big that becomes it might be really small <laughs> and then this was supposed to be like the next books I'm reading and stuff. But they've been like this for ages and I've not read them. So, <laughs> well, I'm currently reading The Midnight Library by Matt Haig and I'm really liking it. But it's taking me a while to get through it. I've read uh, More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera before. But there came a <laughs> deluxe edition. So I bought that because I'm ridiculous. And um, I was like, I should probably reread that before I put it back on the shelf but I haven't yet so <laughs> we'll see maybe I've, I'll be in the mood to read it at some point <laughs> oh yes the blossom and the firefly was one of the books that I was anticipating like a lot for 2020 not read it yet though <laughs> so I'm doing well um I'm <laughs> uh out of love by Hazel Hayes was also on that list I have started reading it uh, but got distracted by other things so I'll get back to it and then we have 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami obviously this is going into the Asian section as well as Norwegian Wood which I got from one of my best friends for my birthday probably 2020 so these are going to the Asian section oh goodness and then there's Odin's Children by Siri Pettersen which is a Norwegian fantasy story, uh, like sort of talking about the Norse gods, but not like entirely. I read about 50 pages of it in the summer and <laughs> I, I really liked what I read. I, I just, I wasn't feeling it at the moment. So I might get back into that, but I might have to restart it. That's fine. And then this miscellaneous little <laughs> pile of books. <laughs> I'm going to remove my camera first. Let's see. So this is The Hand That Dreamt She Could Fly by Soon Mi Hwang, which is a South Korean fairy tale, essentially. And I read it, I don't know, late December. I bought it before um, taking the train to my mother uh, and read almost all of it <laughs> before <laughs> departing. And I really loved it. So and anyways, this is going into the Asian section. This is my copy of Secrets of the Fire by Henning Mankell, which is an old, like real old. <laughs> I guess this should go into YA, the YA section. This, I loved this book as a, I guess, early teenager. And it's about Sophia, who is from Mozambique. And it's her true story as told by this author. And uh, yeah, there's three books. And they're all really good. Stephen King. <laughs> this has not got back into the shelf since Anna gave it back to me when we did the 
like it's been ages. Um, I guess this should go into the general fiction part. It's the only Stephen King book I've read outside of his memoir on writing. And uh, I actually really liked this. Then we have <laughs> The End We Start From by Megan Hunter. And this is the thing with this book. Um, this was a cover by, literally. <laughs> and um, this was from our video judging books by their covers and I really shouldn't have judged this book by its cover. The cover is beautiful. The book was fine but not something that I'm like super excited about so that's going away. And then we have The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue by V. E. Schwab. This is obviously staying. This was one of my favorite books of 2020 and V. E. Schwab is just generally one of my favorite authors of all time. So it's staying right where it is. Now I have to somehow fix the travesty that has happened <laughs> when I was going through all of this. So, okay, I'm going to start by building my Asian section, I think, because I'm most excited about that. And then I'll see what I'm going to do about these books. I never talked about this, actually. This is another book that I was sent by one of my best friends. When I say that, I'm talking about the same person, actually. <laughs> he sent me all of these books. He's a good one, that one. One Nun and a Hundred Thousand by Luigi Pirandello. I, I'm excited about this book, but <laughs> I just, I haven't gotten around to reading it yet. I read a couple of pages and it was beautifully written, but I've not been in the mood just yet. So we'll see. This is technically, I guess, a classic, but I think it's going to stay so that I have it within reach, because I think I might want to read this soon. Okay, let's see what we can do about this. So, after doing some googling, I realized that Katsu Ishiguro was actually born in Japan, and is from uh, Japanese inheritance. So, he's going to end up in the Asian section. Let me know if that's entirely wrong, because technically it says British author, but also he was born in Japan. Technically, this is my bookshelf, so I can't be wrong, but <laughs> yeah, he's going into the Asian fiction. And then when I've placed these two books into there, I'll show you the entire small Asian fiction that I do have. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry if you can hear the construction going on in the background. I can't do anything about that. <laughs> Anyways. This is my Asian section, which I'm pretty pleased with. So these are my uh, Murakami books. And I have a feeling I'll be adding to this by the time I get my Christmas present from the same friend that sent me this and this. <laughs> and then we have Katsu Ishiguro. Then we have Almond, one of my, well, my favorite book of last year. The Miracles of the Nimaya General Store. Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Sweet Bean Paste, which I also read last year and really, really loved, uh, as well as this one here, and The Hen Who Dreamt She Could Fly, which I also really, really liked. So um, I think that's a good start. And then this little thing, <laughs> if you're wondering, is from another one of my best friends who happens, you know, coincidentally to be from and live in Berlin <laughs> so she sent me this as a birthday present a couple of years ago and I really liked it and it uh, holds all of my bookmarks which I find to be very like convenient so um, this shelf is still very empty I think I'm gonna continue here with adding my favorite books and then probably a section of what I'm reading right now and what I'm hoping I'll read <laughs> soon Okay, so the favorite section is back. I've literally just, what has happened to this section is that two of them is over here. So there's Almond and the Miracles of the Namaya General Store uh, are technically in this pile. But because my Asian literature is so small already, yeah, they're gonna stay in there. But be aware that this, these two are two of my favorite books of all time. <laughs> Anyways, and just to point it out, this <laughs> is the signed book thief 
He said, Anna got me, which is adorable. Thank Anna for this. And then, tack så mycket, which is thank you so much in Swedish. And then his signature. So, that's really nice. Anyways, <laughs> thought I'd show you that. So that's really nice. And then, this is my reading and will read. <laughs> So I'm currently reading The Midnight Library by Matt Haig and I am, I like it a lot. It's taking me a while though. It's kind of slow, I think. And then I have also started Out of Love by Hazel Hayes and gotten a, a little bit into it. And Odin's Children, I've also read about 50 pages of. So those three I am reading. Then I'm also listening to an audiobook and then these three... I'm actually still quite excited about so I'm leaving them down here so I can actually reach them because that's the thing with these shelves like I have to stand on my couch as I said to sort of reach this top shelf and I can barely reach to the second <laughs> so when I'm like <laughs> rearranging and like moving stuff around I'm always like is there any book up here that I need to move down <laughs> <laughs> because it's so scary to stand on your couch to be able to like reach this part I still have I have to put up another book on this top shelf for the general fiction because I haven't put back my Stephen King yet and that's gonna go up there in this general fiction because I don't know where else to put it yeah so I'm gonna fix that up and then I've sorted through my YA and I've now grouped them according to author, which I haven't done. Well, I've done as much as possible, but I've always liked having books in height order. But I am trying to not do that this time. We'll see how that goes, uh, how much it's going to bother me. <laughs> I've also kept three things I know are true by Betty Cully up there because this is the thing. I liked it. I just, I, it wasn't what I was expecting because it was written in verse, which I'd entirely missed in the description. But the book itself was actually like fine. So I got that early 2020. So I, I don't feel like sorting it out yet. I haven't had it for that long. So it's staying. And then Secrets of the Fire have moved up there. And as I said, my nonfiction is unchanged it still looks the same i've done my fantasy and like two books of sci-fi <laughs> shelf <laughs> no there's actually three <laughs> so there's like sci-fi is skyward the humans and this is how you lose the time war the rest of these are essentially in the fantasy genre I've moved The Crane Wife by Patrick Ness here because it's kind of magical realism, I guess. And then this Every Heart at Doorway by Sheena McGuire, which I really liked, is, I guess, a fantasy novella, like a portal fantasy. And I want to get more from that series, but I haven't prioritized it. As you can see, I don't have much space, so <laughs> that might have to wait yeah and then i've grouped all of my victoria schwab and then all of my neil gaiman and then there's patrick ness no patrick ruffus jesus <laughs> name of the wind and uh, carlos ruiz safon over there and then that's my harry potter collection surprise surprise so that's that shelf and then classics is unmoved Poetry is unmoved, and then I have to fix up this general fiction part <laughs> and sort of move everything together so it looks nice again. Okay, so now my bookshelf is looking nice and tidy and sorted again, which is such a relief. <laughs> also, when going through all of this, I now have space here. And I now have space up here, so I can fit more books on here, <laughs> which is nice. I realized this wasn't a huge clear out or anything, but what that sort of tells me is that I know my own reading tastes fairly well at this point. 
So I don't buy too many books that I don't enjoy at least. So that is very good. Right, let's check out the books that I am leaving behind. So the one book that I did know was not going to make it through this clear out was Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera. As I said, I checked with Anna and she would like a physical copy, so I'm giving it to her. I just, I couldn't get through this book. It, it didn't capture me, uh, unfortunately, and one of the main characters really, really bothered me. So there's that. I'm gonna see if Anna is interested in reading The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. It's a really sweet LGBT story. Uh, involving social media and the internet in general and then also NASA so it's a it's a cute story so since I'm already giving her one I'm gonna see if she wants to read this too then we have the end we start from by Megan Hunter which as I said previously was a cover by yeah I just I didn't end up enjoying it much it was written very interestingly and none of the characters had names and it was very like clinical in his writing if that makes any sense like there was no feeling it was more like this is what's happening now and uh i just yeah i couldn't really get into it then we have a book i haven't read which is a little life and i i've just come to realize that this seems too tragic and sad and it's just it's not what i need and it's been on my shelf for several years so yeah, I'm saying goodbye to this, unfortunately. Then we have the truth about the Harry Kubert affair, which is a um, criminal novel, I guess. A crime novel. I read it once and it, it was a good crime novel, but problem is now I know the twist. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not going to read this again. And if I do want to read it again, my mother has the Swedish version. So I can just read that. That's fine. Then the book that actually kind of started this clear out. The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling. Uh, I've had this for so long. I read it right when it came out because it was J.K. Rowling. And uh, it's been on my shelf since because I've been one of these people who's like, I want one book from J.K. Rowling that is not Harry Potter. And as I said previously, J.K. Rowling, I'm not too impressed with <laughs> as a human being at the moment. I'm hoping she might, I don't know, uh, get educated. <laughs> A bit but yeah we're saying goodbye to the casual vacancy because i will not reread this book and uh yeah i have no need for this uh i'm very pleased with my harry potter collection and so i guess that's it <laughs> for this time i'm as you can probably see i'm very happy with this <laughs> i'm particularly pleased with my asian fiction section uh which i think looks really pretty and I'm yeah I really like that it makes me happy and as I said hopefully probably a friend of mine is probably sending me another Murakami book <laughs> it's a late Christmas present which is fine <laughs> I'm glad I have some shelf space again and uh yeah this was nice <laughs> and if you want to please let me know how you organize your shelves and how your shelving system looks because I've always liked having everything in like height order, which means that sometimes like books from the same author doesn't end up together, which really bothers me. As I said previously, this time I've reorganized so that my authors are all together. But as I'm looking at it now, it like really bothers me that it's not in height order. <laughs> so we'll see how long I'll deal with it. <laughs> Please let us know in the comments down below. And uh, if you liked the video, please like it and share it and do all the things. And uh, until next time, bye.